This is a painting by Jan Bruegel, a Dutch artist, titled Virgin and Child Surrounded by Flowers and Fruit. At the bottom, there is an unusual animal. Looks like a rabbit, but with horns. This is a creature from North American myths called the jackalope. Recently, some theorized that the jackalope was real rather than imaginary, and that its horns were actually cancer. An infection of a virus called Shope papilloma virus causes proliferation of cancer cells on the head. Without knowing the cause, it looked like a rabbit with horns. As we can see, cancer happens across many multicellular organisms. But only humans strive to fight back against it. The turning point in the millennia-long stalemate towards the human side had been only a few decades ago. Now we know what cancer is and why it happens. But diagnosis and treatment still remain difficult. So we began to think, if human intelligence reached its limit in conquering cancer, why not make a superhuman intelligence? Now we are testing this idea through artificial intelligence. What is an AI? It's a machine intelligence that imitates how human intelligence works. The human brain exchanges data between millions of nerve cells, and cognition happens through analyzing data and identifying features. For example, the many faces we see in our lifetime are all characterized by a number of features. They each have a roundish head with a set pattern of eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And when we see new faces, we look for the same pattern. If we can recognize the features, then we don't need a close analysis to conclude, that's a face. Algorithmic representation of this process is called artificial neural network. Kunihiko Fukushima, the pioneer of deep learning. The research into artificial neural networks began in 1950 and developed further through the 1980s, with most basic principles being formulated by then. But the computer technology of that time was too late for the calculations required to train AIs, which limited the development of artificial neural networks. A breakthrough came in 2000s with the distribution of GPUs. GPU of a new era and artificial intelligence. The CPU, the brain of the computer, processes one sequence at a time. The GPU processes a vast amount of simple data, like graphical data, at once. The intricate and smooth animations seen in modern video games are only possible thanks to the mass, real-time processing power of the GPU. In the 2010s, the GPUs were introduced into AI research, and it became possible for AIs to learn from massive amounts of data at once which meant artificial neural networks became not just an idea, but a reality. This is called deep learning. Deep learning AI, modeled after the human brain, showed better performance than any AI that came before it. For example, by analyzing countless pictures of chairs, an AI learns the features of a chair, categorizes them, and creates patterns. And when it sees a new chair, it uses the patterns to recognize the object as a chair, the same way that a human recognizes a chair, the difference is that a human finds the recognizable features in the data accumulated in life experiences. And AI can learn from a vast amount of data beyond what is possible in human experiences. This is why AIs that are smarter than humans have been invented, and why many expect AIs to revolutionize our world completely. For example, in cancer diagnosis and treatment. Lunit, a startup in South Korea, is putting this idea to the test. Lunit made AI study hundreds of thousands or even millions of data pieces in order to diagnose lung or breast cancer from images. These are images of lungs from a patient screening in 2013, 2014, and 2016. Doctors found and diagnosed the cancer only in 2016 screening, but the AI could find it in the 2013 and 2014 images, previously thought healthy. These are mammograms from a patient screenings in 2017, 2018, and 2019. Doctors found and diagnosed the cancer only in the 2019 screening, but the AI could find it in the 2017 and 2018 images, previously thought healthy. So, if we use AIs in cancer screenings, it will be able to detect cancer too small for humans to detect and help the doctors make the diagnosis. If more people can detect cancer early on, then cancer would be a serious problem for fewer people. This alone is a decisive advantage in the fight against cancer. AI is revolutionizing cancer treatment as well. Immunotherapy, recently hailed as the next generation treatment, activates the dormant immune system and causes the immunocycles to attack cancer cells. The chemical doesn't attack the cells directly, 
so there are less risks of side effects and tolerance. The downside is that each patient has different genetics and different responses to immunotherapy. As such, to use immunotherapy, a tissue sample must be taken, and cells must be individually analyzed and categorized. This process is too massive for human work, but almost trivial for an AI. So if an AI does this work, we will be able to accurately predict the response of each patient, and this will help more patients to benefit from immunotherapy. As we can see, the emergence of AIs in the 21st century is a turning point in the long battle between humanity and cancer. Could humanity's age-old struggle against cancer finally come to an end with the help of AI?